tell you the exception meaning of angel is messenger and the exception meaning of destiny is to make firm establish so my guess now bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present and also i like working with angels and the calmness they bring now in a moment i will introduce you to my wonderful guest tina Ree. but before that i'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show live at a later date as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic reiki, meditation, hypnosis, and angel cards to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Tina Ree, who will be sharing her story and experiences to help us get out of our own way. Um, because when we stuff our emotions, ignore our past experiences, we get stuck in that energy. And if we don't heal and address the wounds from our past and rewrite the story in our minds, they become stumbling blocks and prevent us from achieving the purpose that we have put here to achieve. So you must heal yourself so that you can help heal the world. Now, Tina Ree is a wife, mother, inspirational speaker, transformation coach, Reiki master and teacher who has a passion for life and overcoming obstacles. She was diagnosed with an incurable illness and after multiple surgeries took her life into her own hands and has survived over 10 years past the time the doctors predicted for her. She has never allowed anyone to dictate her life and has conquered and triumphed over loss, abuse, tragedy and illness. She spends her days mentoring and teaching others how to heal their wounds and find belonging in this world. So without further delay, hello Tina and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on today. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions and leave comments and thoughts as both Tina and I want to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. So Tina, why don't you tell us um, about yourself and how to discover uh, um, and how we can get out of our own way? Okay, great. <laughs> so um, how everything started for me, um, you know, it's a, it was a journey of healing and I had to heal from my childhood. It, many women, a lot of their damage or, or pain starts from their childhood. So I was born into a family of five and I dealt with a lot of emotional abuse and um, having to overcome negative self-talk and limiting beliefs myself. I grew up believing that I was worthless, that I was unwanted, that I didn't have a purpose in life and really struggled as a child with trying to find out where I belonged. And at the age of 18, my parents um, kicked me out of the home and I had to learn how to grow up and kind of be an adult really fast. So um, I started trying to figure out <laughs> how to navigate this massive world with a juvenile type mindset, <laughs> and, <laughs> which is always a challenge. <laughs> yeah. And, um, at, at six months after I left my parents' home, I was diagnosed with the incurable illness, like you mentioned. And they basically said, you know, most people that have this illness end up getting cancer due to the illness within a couple of years and pass away. We can try to operate on you and reopen. I was having issues with my esophagus. So they said, we can try to operate mm -hmm. on you, reopen your esophagus. But if that doesn't work, there's nothing we can do for you. So I underwent 30 surgery over six years. Um, mm -hmm. And there's nothing we, at this point. We just have to um, medicate you and let let you, the course take its path, right? Um, yeah. So I, I already didn't feel very confident in myself. I had a low self esteem, and I ended up getting into a relationship with a very abusive man, and um, I just thought, well, this is what I deserve. I, you know, I don't deserve anything more. And he beat me on a regular basis, and I ended up getting pregnant by him. And that is kind of like the first aha moment I had in my life. Like, if I'm not supposed to live, why would God allow me to get pregnant? Like, why would he allow mm. me to be a mom? And so I fought my way out of that abusive relationship, not for myself, because I didn't feel like I deserved 
to escape it, but for my daughter, because I thought that she deserved to have a life without abuse. Hmm. And so I fought my way out of it. And six months after escaping that relationship, I ended up having to give birth to her due to my illness. My body couldn't withstand the pregnancy. And she ended up passing away when she was born. Oh, and yes. so um, obviously that was a very hard, traumatic time in my life when I finally felt like I had a reason to live. It was taken away from me. And um, that's when my journey kind of started for healing. I, I believed that that there was more to my life than what I had accepted. I realized that I, I could no I, I could no longer stay on this earth accepting that this was supposed to be my life. So I started to go within myself to figure out why was I such a terrible person that why why was I worthless? Why wasn't I lovable? I I want I needed to change that to fix that because that wasn't the person I wanted to become. And so with my illness, I wanted to get off all of the drugs that the doctors had me on. So I started using essential oils to get me off of the drugs. And I was able to, to um, wean myself off of the really high opioids that the doctors had me on through the use of the essential oils. And through the process of that um, physical healing, I found Reiki energy healing. And um, that Reiki really opened up and broadened my horizons and my spirituality and allowed me to believe that there was more to this life than what I had been living. Um, and so through the Reiki, my healing transformation really started to grow and expand. And then I found life coaching, which I felt like, like all the healing pieces were on the table, but they were in pieces. They weren't connected. And I felt yeah. like the life coaching really helped to come in and connect the pieces. So I could really see the path very clearly of what was taking place and what needed to happen in my life. Um, and so that kind of brings me to where I'm at today. I was able to really heal those wounds. I was able to shed the skin of my past to really say, you know, I don't have to accept the story I was born into. I can choose to throw that away and rewrite my own story. Um, and so that's what I've done. I now am married. I have three beautiful children. I still have my illness, but I manage it through natural means. And I'm able to really empower myself and other women. I'm able to spot the pain that other women are in, even when they're trying to hide behind the mask. And I'm able to help pull that beauty out from within them that they don't see themselves. And it's just become a real passion of mine. And I love it. Um, I recently wrote a book about my journey and, and how I was able to heal um, everything. And I'm currently in the process of writing a second book, which is going to be a step-by-step -step process of how you can heal yourself. Um, so that's kind of the story. The, the way to get out of your own way is really to take responsibility for your actions and your mindset, because it's all in the mindset. If you sit there and you throw yourself a pity party and you believe that you're worthless, you believe that you're unworthy, you're unlovable, you're going to stay in that in that vibration. It, it's at that point where you decide to accept where you're at, acknowledge it, change it, forgive yourself and the others that have hurt you, that you can start to move forward in life and really get out of your own way. Yeah. Although I suppose um, it's kind of like getting yourself to that point where you can have that acceptance. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, how long did it take you to, to, to get to that point and what really was the um catalyst that you that you suddenly thought damn i need to i need to change this now um yeah it took me the entire journey from the point where i was like damn i need to change this <laughs> to where i'm at today it's been about six years it's been a long journey it didn't happen overnight it was very painful um took a lot of self-responsibility to take place um i think trinity dying really made me realize um something's got to change I can't continue to live this way. And there's more to life. I just have to go out and find it. So I think that that was the catalyst. Um, and then through my healing journey, I kept getting more and more aha moments. So for instance, when I started using the essential oils, I went to this class that was teaching you how to physically support your body with essential oils. But the interesting thing was in that class, they were teaching you that all of your physical ailments are from emotional wounds that have gone unaddressed. And I had never heard that before. I had never made that connection that my physical ailment could be from an emotional issue. So it's really interesting is the condition I have is called echolasia and it's an esophageal condition where your esophagus literally closes itself and starves your body to death. My, your throat chakra 
my throat chakra was closed down throughout my childhood. I wasn't listened to, I wasn't heard. And so it makes complete sense with that connection of emotional, physical connection that I have echolasia because for 18 years, my throat chakra was closed solid. And so it makes sense that physically it now is closed mm. solid. Um, and so that was a really aha moment in my journey of healing is really realizing like, oh, I, I need to open this up. I need to take this um, seriously. And it's up to me to make this change. No one's going to do it for me. Yeah. Um, hi, sir. I'm like, no worries, Lisa. Thank you for joining. Yes. Welcome, Lisa. <laughs> and that you can join the show anytime, anytime you like. Um, we're, we're, we're happy for people to join any any anytime they like. So do you find that the women that come to you, um, they've actually had that that catalyst moment or uh, they not quite got there yet and you help them with that? The majority of the women that come to me have not gotten there yet. Uh, the majority of the women come to me because they hear my story and they're inspired and they're like, you, you've gone through what I've gone through. I feel like I'm connected to you. I just don't know how to get where you're at. And so a lot of it is just kind of putting the pieces together, like I mentioned, with that life coaching portion of it, um, is really making them understand that, yes, it's possible. It's not just me. It's not a one size fits all. Everyone has their own journey. And you all you have to do is make that choice. It's literally a choice to allow courage to overcome fear. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. And uh, Lisa agrees. Yeah, totally agree about, about about the chakras. And do you work with the chakras with the uh, women that, that come and see you? I do. So what I, I've created, what's called, what I call whole body healing. So we do a portion of life coaching to kind of address all of the thought processes and the, and the stuffed and suppressed emotions, because you can't really heal the chakras if you don't address the stuffed emotions. It's, it kind of goes hand in hand, right? So I, I do uh, life coaching first to address the issues that are that are blocked. And then I use Reiki follow, directly following life coaching, coaching. I go into Reiki and I go through all the different chakras. And what's really beautiful is I'm an intuitive healer. And I think most Reiki healers are. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm able to hear the stuffed emotions that are stuck in the chakras. And many times the women don't even, they're like, that happened, but I didn't even remember it. And so I'm able to like go in there and go, oh, I see this, this nine-year-old girl um, is going through this issue right now. And you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. I'm like, well, that's what's holding you back in this area of your life. So let's address that right now. And so it's really beautiful to see the aha moments literally in action immediately with the clients as I work through them. And, it, and it's a process. You like pull layers back. So it's not like a one time is going to fix everything. One time is going to open your eyes and then you've got to work through it. Um, so I, it, it's just so beautiful for me, for me to be able to see these women get empowered and supported in, in their growth and their healing process when they've never felt that support before. So I just, I just love seeing their faces light up and their, and their messages coming back. Like, Oh, today was beautiful. I've never felt so, so, so safe and so secure. And I didn't get in a fight with my husband when I normally fight with him. And it's just so cool to watch the changes. Yeah. And, and do you find that um, it's the same issues that keep coming up or different issues? Um, I think there's multiple issues. I mean, all of us have multiple layers in our life. Um, even for me, like all, I think that I've worked through an issue and then it, it, there's a trigger and it rears its ugly head. I'm like, oh, I'm not done with that yet. <laughs> okay. Let's go back and readdress that. Now I see it at a different angle. I see it through a different lens. Let's address this side now. <laughs> so, um, it, it, it's funny how life works, right? It took us years mm. to pile on all the damage that we're working through. It didn't just happen. You know, you just wake up one day and you're damaged. No, it takes years and years of abuse, right? Um, and and you can be from a perfectly healthy childhood, but still have layers of abuse, whether it's self-abuse or external abuse, internal abuse. It, it takes time to work through that. So, yeah, multiple yeah. different. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, Lisa says, um, I feel some people are afraid to face their emotions because they've mm -hmm. become so used to them. They believe that if they get rid of these heavy emotions, there'll be nothing left. And it's not true at all. That, yeah, that's very correct. A lot of people find their identity through their pain. And they're afraid that if they heal that pain, 
they no longer will be the person that they are. In fact, I believe that they will refine the person who they are and become an even more beautiful person. Their, their internal beauty is allowed to become their external beauty at the same time. And, and you, pro, you prolong your life too. When you're healing those wounds, you're able to live a longer, happier life because you're not, I call it your baggage suitcase. You're not tugging the suitcase along with you with all this crap. You're able to let go of that luggage and just move forward freely. Um, but yes, Lisa, you're very correct. So many of my clients say, this is just me. This is just how I am. This is how I've been my whole life. Well, yeah, it is how you've been your whole life, but you don't have to be that way anymore. You can choose today to let go of that and change it. And you can still be who you are. And if you don't want to be who you are today, you can change that too. <laughs> Every day is a new day. Every second's a new second. You can, you can wake up one morning and be this bitter old woman. And in the afternoon, you can have let that all go and be this beautiful butterfly recreating her life. You are you are not tethered to any specific emotion or memory or identity. You can change everything. It's it's beautiful. We we have complete control in this life. Yeah, we're we're like butterflies really. Um mm -hmm. we we can we can create anything we really want um in, in a life. And I love the way you actually use the word refine. I like yeah. <laughs> we, we refine, refine you, not not if I refine. I think that's absolutely brilliant. And Lisa agrees with you. Um, exactly, Tina. Um, she's totally with you um, on on that one, which is which which is which is pretty cool. So um, obviously, it's sort of like getting out of of your own way. Mm -hmm. um, so, kind of like your story was you getting out of, of of your own way and in your book that you've done of your story um you say you're on your second one now how what are some of the things because you said you're going to talk about some of the things you did how well you know give us a couple of, of ideas of, of how you helped yourself um i think one of the most significant ways was to acknowledge what i didn't like about myself and to choose to change it. For instance, um, growing up, I was a pathological liar because I wanted attention and I didn't care how I got the attention. So I would lie and make up all of these stories that I thought would make people want to be around me and want to befriend me just so that I could find some kind of a connection. And that became my reputation. That became my identity. Tina's a liar. And so when I started to lose friendships or start to reconnect with family members and they said, we don't want to be associated with you. We don't like who you are. That was a real um, face check. Like, oh, let me look in this mirror and say, do I like who that is? If I can't trust myself, how can anyone else trust me? So just really understanding, um, taking responsibility for what I didn't like and changing it, making a conscious effort to say, okay, I don't have to pretend to be this person. I can be who I want to be. And if they don't want to be around me because of who I am, that's okay. Someone else will. I'll find a different circle because I don't have to be stuck in this, in this hole. Um, so really taking responsibility of your actions and consciously changing what you don't like about yourself. So um, a lot of times when you look at someone and they trigger something within you that brings in a negative emotion or feeling, it's because you're seeing yourself within them. It's like a mirror complex. And so if you're coming up to someone and they're rubbing you the wrong way, ask yourself, what is it about them that I don't like? Because most likely that's something within you that you don't like either. And so you can consciously change that now that you're aware of it. So really looking at who you are as a person and what do you like and what don't you like and feed the personality traits of yourself that you like and dismiss and uh, eliminate the personality traits of yourself that you, that just, it, it's holding you back. So that's one way to get out of your own way. Another way is to friend people that are smarter than you and that are living the life that you want to have because we can't achieve the life that we want if we don't know how to get there. So if we can align ourselves with like-minded people on the path that we're trying to become or be on, then we can pull ourselves up to where we want to be because we can focus, we can learn from those people. Um, 
And then another thing is to go within. So many people are out there searching for other people to fix them, right? I have people that are like, oh, I went to this psychic reader and they told me this. Oh, I went to this hypnosis person and they they did this to me. Oh, I did your Reiki. And um, they, they, they're going everywhere else, but they're not stopping, pausing and going within. No one else can tell you what's wrong with you. Only you can do that. And you have to connect with your higher self and ask yourself, what do I need to change? What needs to be fixed? What do I need to get out of my path so that I can move forward? And no one is going to be able to tell you that but yourself. And so those are a few things and a few techniques that I have used to get out of my own way. And I still do it when I feel stuck, when I feel like I'm hitting a wall, when I'm trying to achieve a goal in my life and I just can't seem to get it. I have to stop and meditate and go within and go, okay, what am I doing wrong? What am I not seeing? Show me the path. Show me the way. And I have to be quiet and listen. <laughs> and yeah. that's the thing is we don't know how to listen. <laughs> oh, Yes. Yeah, that's 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 the that's that's the big that's the big thing. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of their, um, a lot of people just don't know how to listen to mm. to to their higher selves. And mm. and obviously you you work like me in the you know when people um, when I have clients come to see me, I'm just helping them on their journey for them to work out what they're doing, where they're going, and and ev and everything. I'm not. I'm not telling them what what's going on or what they should be doing. I'm allowing them to work it out themselves because, as you said, you know, only you can fix yourself. Nobody else can fix you. They can, they can guide you, but you can't rely on anyone to fix you if you can't if you can't do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Lisa's asking, what do we do when our body affects our emotions? For example, menopause: the difference between a physical emotion and a mental emotional emotion. Um, so Lisa, I think with that is a lot of times our body is lacking in something and that's what's bringing in the physical. So if it's if it's literally our hormones that are causing the, uh, the physical um, issue, obviously it's a chemical thing, it's not an emotional thing. And so you can try to figure out how to plug in what, what's lacking. So with menopause, um, I like to use like clary sage and things like that to balance out my hormones um, because clary sage has natural, um, oh my goodness, my mind just went blank. Um, estrogen, it has natural estrogen within it. So clary sage is a really good plant-based solution to plug the holes within our hormones as our body starts to transition and it helps to alleviate some of the symptoms. Um, now, because you're, you're transitioning and your hormones are kind of going crazy, it's going to affect your emotions as well. And so really meditating and, and finding peace within. And again, it all goes back to going within. If you're struggling emotionally, it all goes back to going within because what is that emotion telling you? It's telling you that you need a little extra love. And who's better to love you than yourself? right? No one's going to love you better than you. So going within and really just giving your body permission to transition and change. Um, awesome. You already take sage. So there's a couple of other plants as well. If you want, um, you can message me at the end of this and I can tell you a couple of other supplements that I use and suggest as well. Yeah. And it's funny before the show started, when we were talking about it and I said, yeah, I've, I've started taking sage myself now. Yeah. Um, and, that, and obviously I, I do meditate all the time. So uh so, so that kind of like um, helps uh, see. And Louise, who's watching, hi Louise. Um, so, so, ladies, this is wonderful. Glad you're enjoying it, Louise. And if you've got any questions you want to ask, then or, um, you know, please, please, please do ask. You know, Tina knows a bit about herbs and stuff like that, so you know, she might be able to throw a few more, few more things in, especially for us ladies who are kind of like going through this wonderful change that happens with us. Um, which allow, I, th I, I always look at it and it's kind of like in the end, it gives us more freedom when mm -hmm. we've actually gone through it because we're not then worrying about, um, you know, periods and emotions and stuff like that. We, we just kind of like free of it. We can just get on. Yeah, definitely. And, and do our life. So where are you sort of like seeing yourself going next? Because obviously we've had the COVID-19 
Mm -hmm. So you have not been able to um, do the hands-on um, uh, treatments that, that you were doing. Um, are you still able to um, uh, work with clients online? Um, you know, are you thinking about taking it to the next step? Obviously, you're saying you're writing an you know, another book. So you've read a bit one, you're writing another one. So you see quite busy. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, where, where, where are things going with you? That's an excellent question. So yes, I have had to pivot my business, um, but I'm really enjoying this online um, opportunity. So what I've done is I've created a workshop. It's called Belief Breakthrough Workshop. And that workshop is a live like Zoom platform where it's four hours of me teaching you how your brain works, how your brain stores different memories and how to eliminate negative memories and fill in that memory with a positive memory that you choose to and basically rewrite the script that plays in your head. Many of us struggle with negative emotions and we lay in bed at night and we just think about terrible things about ourselves. We we talk to ourselves so negatively in ways that we wouldn't even talk to a stranger. And so it, that that um, belief breakthrough workshop is all about breaking through negative beliefs and rewriting that script in your head to where you can find belief within yourself. You can recreate positivity. You can really change your mindset. It's all about shifting your mindset. Um, so that will be launching. We're going to be doing our first class in June. And then I've also created a Breakthrough to Abundance Academy, which is a 12-week intensive workshop where um, we're not only rewriting your limiting beliefs and your negative beliefs, but we're actually creating the path you want to walk for the rest of the, your life. And I'm holding you by your hand and creating action steps with you to achieve that goal that you created. You get one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with me as well as group question and answers and homework assignments so that you're opening up your thought processes and reprogramming the way that your brain is creating the synapses. Um, so two different opportunities that I've created and uh, really just holding hands with, with, with these amazing women that are coming alongside me and helping them. I, I really am shining the light and going, oh, there's a rock right there. Step over it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's this really big tree branch. Let's cut that down for you. <laughs> so it's just um, I am pivoting. Um, I'm not doing the hands on anymore, but it's amazing how energy work can go any amount of distance, right? There's yes. not, there's nothing that's going to stop that energy from reaching you, especially if the intention is strong. So I'm still doing that whole body uh, mentality where I'm doing the life coaching and the Reiki and we go over essential oils. We go over your nutrition and your meal plans. We go over literally every aspect of your life and, and that, um, but breakthrough to abundance Academy, that 12 week intensive course, we literally are going through every aspect of your life and writing down what you want to achieve and making sure that by the end of that 12 weeks, you not only have your goals in place, but you're already achieving them. So I'm really excited about both of those, um, those opportunities that have been created. Yeah. And all through COVID, all through COVID-19, it just goes yeah. to show that some of the positives that, that comes out of it. And I like the way you, you, know, you, were, you were talking about changing your mindset and, and something you, know, you, you sort of like said earlier, you know, if, if someone was, you know, uh, you were brought up with someone saying, oh, I, I love you, I love you dearly, but I don't particularly like you. Right. Um, that, that can have a knock on effect. So, so you were kind of like saying you can change that to and, and get rid of the, but I don't like you and just concentrate on the, I love you. Yeah. So growing up, I heard a lot. Um, I love you because I have to, but I just don't like you from my parents. Um, and so that I, I didn't hear the I love you part. I only heard the I don't like you part. And that's really what fed my feelings of insecurity and unworthiness. And I, I convinced myself that I was unlovable. They weren't saying that they didn't love me. They were saying they didn't like me because of my actions, right? But I was not hearing that I love you part. And so when I was able to go back and look at that and go, you know, they weren't saying that I was unlovable. They weren't saying that I was unworthy. They were frustrated with me. They literally were speaking out of frustration when they were saying those words to me. They didn't mean any negative connotation around those words. So I was able to eliminate that negativity with that phrase and just completely eliminate the I don't like you part. I chose to hear the I love you part and believe that I was loved. 
And because of that, that changed my aspect of my relationship with my parents. And it allowed me to start to accept their love and not see them as the enemy or not see them as these terrible monsters that have been created in my mind. And now I can have a loving relationship with my parents because I chose to rewrite that belief in my mind. So yeah, there's ways around it. That's amazing. And Elisa, I find it comical. One second I'm laughing and I'm crying. One second I love men. Next second I want them as far as possible. Menopause is very funny. And yes. if you keep your head on straight, but this is this is what got me. Puts the cake down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh, brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. So she uh, Lisa always says, so we can choose what we wish to hear. We're responsible for what we hear, not what is not what is said. Exactly. There's this, there's this um, concept that I love to talk about. So I'm currently going through NLP training, uh, which is neuro linguistic programming. And it's called causality, where there's cause and there's effect. And many people have heard that in the past, but they don't completely understand it. So on the cause side, you realize that you have control right? You have complete control over everything that happens. You can choose to have a negative reaction or a positive reaction. It's your choice. That's the cause side. The effect side is the victim side, the victim mentality. So if something happens to you and you choose to not have control over yourself and your actions, then you're going to affect, right? You're going to, you're going to go at that in a negative viewpoint. You're going to have a negative connotation attached to that forever because you've, you, you stored that memory in your brain. Mm. And every single time you remember that memory, you're going to feel that emotion, right? People remember how you made them feel. They don't remember what you said or did. They always remember how you made them feel. So it's your choice, Lisa. You're correct. You choose how you want to store that memory. Do you want to store it on the cause side, which is positive and you're in control? Or do you want to store it on the effect side where you're the victim and you have no control? And now you've stored that negative emotion with that memory. So it's the causality. And how, what side do you want to live on? Yeah, makes absolute perfect sense. You know, when you when you when you put it like when when you put it uh, like that and explaining causality. Um, so now, as you know, I do um, guided meditations, angel card readings. So each week, I do like to ask my guests whether they would like me to do a mini guided meditation or pull an angel card for them and their selves watching. So, Tina, what would you like me to do? Ooh, let's do an angel card. <laughs> I really don't know why I bother asking because everyone always says angel cards. It's like, no, okay, <laughs> we, we, we do the cards and that. So I'll just do a quick cleanse and the best. And of course, when, when I read cards, um, I don't predict the future with cards. Um, the mm -hmm. way I read cards is um, for what we need to know in our present. So although I work with the past, with past life regression, we work with the past to heal it so we can be fully in the present. And I work with the future so we know our future. So we come back to the present. So everything with me comes back to the present, which is how I do the cards as well. And it's always what we need to know for our highest good, because as you were saying, saying earlier, you know, um, our, our higher self knows. Um, uh, but oh, before we do that, um, Lisa said, or oh, no reaction. Is apathy negative? Oh, that's, that's a good one. Question. Yeah. So I think that either way, you're going to have a reaction, Lisa. You're going to choose to not have a negative reaction and just allow that memory to be neutral or positive. But either way, you're going to choose. You're either going to take a, a positive approach or a negative approach. You're going to choose which way are you going to handle it. You're not just going to completely um, be void. And I think that that's kind of what apathy is. It's that part where you're kind of void. And I don't necessarily think apathy is negative, but I think it's like um, unconscious energy. It, it's, it's not directed. So it's that numbness, right? So it's not negative or positive, but I think it's like a numbness where you have to decide what direction to take it. It's kind of like the pause, if that makes sense. Um, so if you're sitting there and you're feeling numb, or apathetic, you kind of have to ask yourself, which direction do I want to take this? How do I want to process this? What do I want to take this information and how do I want to use it? Um, so I think apathy is just when your body is kind of like at its limit and it doesn't know which direction to turn and it needs your conscious 
to tell it where to go. Yeah. That, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Okay, we'll, we'll we'll find out. I'll do the cards, and then um, hopefully that will Lisa will have her answer that. Makes sense. It makes sense to me with 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 what with what you're saying. So, what does Tina and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Tina and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? Okay, let's see what we've got come out. Which is absolutely perfect. Um, <laughs> I, lo I love the way the cards come out. Infinite abundance. Abundance Ooh. is pouring into your life. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Which is absolutely um, perfect for you with, um, with, with what you're doing at the moment. Um, with, with the workshops um, or the online courses and the fact that one of them is going to be abundance as well. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, there's a lot of lot of positivity there for what, what you're doing, which is absolutely brilliant. And, of course, for those of you watching, you know, there is abundance coming in. You just have to be open to it. Um, and that's really, really what, what the card, card is saying, you know, be open to the um, infinite abundance that is out there and is and is coming your way. The fact this card's it's come out says it is coming your way. So be prepared for it and be ready to welcome it in, um, into, into your life. Definitely, yes. I am so excited. I love that card. <laughs> it's brilliant that it came out. Um, okay, so Lisa answered that one. Uh, like a vacuum, I meant it to be action, so to speak, but I understand what you mean. It can be like a vacuum, um, but still that even even if you feel as though apathy is kind of like a vacuum, that what the vacuum pulls in has to go somewhere, right? So you still have to kind of direct that energy. Where do you want it to go and where do you want it to be stored? Because when you go through something and you stuff it, it sets roots and it sets up a house somewhere, right? And it makes its home somewhere within your body and your emotions, um, and so you really have, you still have control over where you're going to guide it to go. Are you going to allow it to set roots, roots in a negative place? Or are you going to choose to allow it to set roots in an empowerment place, allowing you to grab energy from it and move forward? So do you want it to keep you stuck or do you want it to empower you to move forward? It, you still have complete control over it, every single second of it. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's a brilliant. And I think Lisa kind of like, um, understands that and she says great card it is Lisa so uh, yeah get your arms open get your um, shirts your skirts get them open and get ready for that abundance to come flowing in into your life um, you, you know we're probably going to ha all have to get a few bigger clothes um, you know sort of like being indoors you know just to oh we want to get rid of clothes so let's just use them and get all the abundance coming in so, Tina, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Well, with COVID and the way that we're currently living, I, I think I would like to say keep your eyes wide open. Process everything in a positive note. There's so much fear being pushed out through the media right now. There's so much unknown that this is the perfect opportunity for you to pause and write your own path to choose what steps you wanna take and in what direction do you wanna go. It's almost like we've been given a clear slate to start fresh of where we want to head. So make sure that every step you take from here on out, you take on purpose and with the direction you choose to go, not where everyone else is pushing you. Right now in isolation, we don't have all the extra noise, right? So we have the ability to be clear headed and move forward with our thoughts and with our goals and with our heart. Allow your heart to lead you instead of your mind. If there's too much noise going on upstairs, take a breath, go within, meditate, clear that space out so that you can listen to your heart and allow that to lead, lead you forward in life. Yeah. And Lisa, turn your umbrellas upside down. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, most, most, most definitely need to uh, turn them upside down. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this and found it insightful and the words of wisdom Tina has given you and um, will help you further on your journey. 
So Tina, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Well, I've got so many opportunities. So I'm on Facebook. You can just find me at Tina Encarnacion. You can go to my website, healingbytina.com. Really simple, healingbytina.com. I'm also on YouTube at Tina Encarnacion, and I'm on Instagram at Tina Encarnacion. My last name is so big. Hence why we were calling, we were calling Tina, Tina A. Yes, yes. So healingbytina.com, you can go to my website. I think that's the easiest one to remember. And then from there, you can navigate to any other areas. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll post all the links um, on, onto the comments um, uh, uh, after the show, today or tomorrow. So so all the links will be there for you to click on if, if you actually want to want to do them. Um, so um, everyone, if Thank you so much for, for watching the show and for um, joining in the conversation. And I hope you have enjoyed this and found it insightful. And the words of wisdom Tina has given you will help you further on your journey. And of course, if you have reached that crossroads in your life um, and need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call to chat about how I can help you on your journey. And of course, the Angel Wings membership community um, is open at the moment um, until midnight tonight where you um, where you get it for founder members price um, and you get a um, personalized guided meditation for whatever journey you're going on so that will only be until midnight tonight so i'll post the link and if you want to sign up for that and of course if you sign up for my weekly newsletter um, on my website then you get free guided uh, meditation and a few free gifts so thank you everyone so much for watching i would like to invite you to share this video as i'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and look forward to you joining me next week when my guest will be Jocelyn Bellows. So again, thank you so much, Tina, for being on the show. It's been absolutely um, brilliant. It's been lovely having you. And thank you, um, Lisa, for being on the show. It's been lovely. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for joining in. And Louise, it's been great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for, for, for you all uh, watching and uh, joining in. And all have a wonderful rest of the week and all take care. Bye. <laughs>